but in this lesson I will differentiate between the market and the individual firm. Let us look at the two graphs, the market and the individual firm. I will explain them with a graph. Now, when we draw our graphs, it is important to note that we should draw the vertical X and then the horizontal X. We should always put the zero there because the zero indicates the point of origin. We should also label our graphs. In this case, the, vert, the name of the vertical X is price and the name of the horizontal X is quantity. Let's draw the individual firm again. Again, you can see the vertical X and the horizontal X. Zero is the point of origin. The price is the name of this X and the horizontal X is quantity. Now let's look at the market. We will start with the market. Now the market is we have the demand curve and we have the supply curve. Now when we look at this, we are busy with the perfect market. Now the perfect market is characterized by many buyers and many sellers. No one can influence the market price. But we say the market price is determined by the interaction between demand and supply. Now, when we look at the demand curve, the demand curve slope from top left to right bottom, we say this is a negative slope and the supply curve slope upwards from bottom left to top right. And that is a positive slope. Now the point where demand and supply intersect, where they meet, we call this the equilibrium. And there we usually indicate it with an E, but it can also be any letter of the alphabet. Now at point E, where quantity demand is equal to quantity supplied on the market. We say that this is quantity demand intersect quantity supply. They are equal there. This is where the market price is standard end, or the equilibrium price is standard end, and the equilibrium quantity is a hundred. Now what happens? Now this, when we refer to this graph, this graph, when you see something, we refer to the market or the industry. Now when the price increase to 12 Rand, when the price is higher than the market price, the quantity demand will drop. You can see there the quantity demand drop. Why? Because buyers or consumers will buy from other sellers. And if this happens, the business will lose market share. They will lose clients. OK, now. They will not charge a price lower than the market price. Because they can sell their goods at the market price and the market price is higher than eight rand. Why would the business charge a price lower than the market price? Buyers and sellers are prepared to pay the market price, in this case, 10 rand. If they sell below the market price, 
it will influence their profitability negatively. That is why we say the individual firm. Now, this is the market. Now, when we look at the individual firm, and that is why the individual firm is a price taker. And the individual firm takes the market price from the market. And in this case, the individual firm will take the market price of 10 Rand. And that is why we say the firm or the individual firm will not charge a price higher. They will not charge a price lower. They will accept the market price. Now the individual firm. Let's look at the individual firm. The individual business forms a small part of the market and that is why they do not influence the price but they are influenced they do not influence the price but they are influenced by the market price so if the market price increase they will increase their price if the market price drop they will drop their market price that is why we say the individual business is a price taker. They take the price from the market. They take the price that is determined by the market, by demand and supply. Now let's look at the individual firm further. The individual firm is faced with a horizontal demand curve. It is perfectly elastic. A small increase in price will have a zero effect on demand. The individual business can offer any quantity of goods, any quantity of goods at the market price. And this confirms the fact that the firm has no influence over price. The demand curve for the individual business is a horizontal line, and you know this by now. But the demand curve is equal to the average revenue curve to the average revenue curve. You can see there. That is why, what does this mean? It means that the demand curve is also the price, is also the marginal revenue curve, is also the average revenue curve. And that is why, let's start with this. The demand curve is equals to the average revenue curve in all cases. Under the perfect market, all units are sold at the same price, the market price. This means that the price it receives is the same as for every unit sold. That is why average revenue, how do we get average revenue? It is the total revenue divided by the quantity sold the average revenue the business receives is therefore equal to the market price and that is why we can say that the horizontal demand curve rep also represents the average revenue curve therefore demand equals to price equals to marginal revenue equals to average revenue. Now let's look at marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is equal to demand curve. The market price is fixed. It is determined by the market. And the individual firm use or take the market price. 
marginal revenue is the change from selling one additional or extra unit, which is the same as the market price. So every time the business produce and sells an additional product, additional product, it will be at the market price. So for every time he sells an additional product, that is the marginal revenue. It will be at the market price. Every additional unit will be sold at market price, which is the horizontal demand curve. Therefore, to end off, we can say demand is equal to marginal revenue is equal to average revenue. Why is this? Because the price is fixed, the market price is fixed, and there are many buyers and sellers. Profit maximization using the total cost and total revenue curves under perfect competition. Now let's look we are going to do it by using graphs. Now, again, like I've said in the previous session, when we draw graphs, we start with vertical, horizontal. This is our point of origin or our origin. We have to label the vertical axis. And in this case, it is price, income and cost. Our horizontal X, um, X is quantity and now we are busy with the firm or the business. Now, when we look at this curve, this is the total revenue curve. Now, the total revenue curve starts at the origin and it has a positive slope upward. Now, when we look at the total revenue curve, it starts at zero because if nothing is produced, the business receives no income. And the slope of the total revenue curve is determined by the prevailing or the current market price. Now let's go further. Let's look, this is the total. Now let's look at the total cost curve. Now the total cost curve What is the difference between the total cost and total revenue? When we look at total cost, this is the cost which the business incur or spend to produce the goods. Total revenue is the revenue or the money it earns when it sells the product. Now let's look at the first one, when we look at an output level, now what does output level means? It means what do we produce? The amount of goods or units produced. Now at an output level between zero and three, it is just before three units. The firm is making a economic loss. Now, why is the firm making an economic loss here? The reason for that is total cost is more or greater than total revenue. In other words, we spent more money to produce the articles than what we earn when we sell the articles. So we are making an economic loss here. When we go on, in other words, we can also say the total cost curve, you follow the total cost curve, lies above the total revenue. So when it lies above, it means that your total cost is more than your total revenue you earn. When we look at three units, at three, what happens there? At an output level of three units, 
The firm makes no or zero economic profit. The firm is breaking even, meaning your total cost is equal to total revenue. Now, when we look further, just beyond three units, just beyond three units, up to eight units, just before eight units, this is the bracket or this is the output level where the firm makes economic profit. <clears throat> so why? Why does the firm makes economic profit between three units and just before eight units? The reason for that is your total revenue is more than your total cost. So the company or the business or the firm earns more money than what it spends to produce the article. And that is why we say from just beyond three units and just before eight units, the firm is making economic profit. When we look at eight units again, at eight units, there you can see the firm is making zero economic profit and zero economic loss. Again, here, yeah, the firm is breaking even. But what can you see here? The firm is breaking even at a higher output level. Now, what does that mean? When the firm breaks even here, yeah, breaks even here, yeah, they only produce three units. But when they break even here, yeah, at this point C, they are making eight units. So that is why I say they, they break even at a higher output level. When the firm produce beyond eight units, again here, yeah, if they go here yeah, beyond eight units, again, what happens? The firm is making economic loss. Why? Because your total cost is more than your total revenue. Or you can say your total revenue is less than your total cost. Total cost is greater than total revenue. So you use more money to produce the units than what you earn when you sell the units. Now, where does the firm maximize its profits? The firm maximizes its profits here where the red line is. Now at six units, the firm maximizes its profits at six units. Why? Because the distance between the total revenue and total cost curve is the greatest. So that is this is here where the firm maximizes its profits. It maximizes its profits where the distance between your total revenue and your total cost is the greatest. Thank you very much. Profit maximization using the marginal cost and marginal revenue curves under perfect competition. Now, there is something I want you to remember. When we do cost curves, all businesses should produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost because that is the point where they maximize their profit or it is called the profit maximization point. Now I'm going to use graphs to illustrate the profit maximization principle. And now I'm going to put on the slideshow. Now we all know when we draw graphs is that we have to draw the vertical X, the horizontal X, the point of origin, 
then we have to label our axis. In this case, it is price, income, and cost. And the horizontal x will be axis will be quantity. We we are busy with the individual business under perfect competition. Now we know by now that under perfect competition, we know that there are many buyers and many sellers, and that the individual firm do not make the price. They are not price makers, but they are price takers. They take the price from the market. Now let's go on. And we know also by now that the horizontal demand curve is also another curve called the marginal revenue. And there's also another curve, the average revenue. Like I've said in the previous lesson, this is actually three curves that lies on top of each other. Now let's look at the marginal cost curve. Now look at the shape of the marginal cost curve. It has a downward and then it moves upward again. It looks like some learners like to call it. It looks like the Nike sign. But please, grade 12s, do not write in the examination the Nike sign. This curve is called the marginal cost curve and you must write marginal cost curve. Now, when you do the marginal cost curve, then what are you looking at first? I always tell learners, you have the marginal revenue curve here, you have the average revenue, and you have the demand curve, and you have the marginal cost curve now the point and now this is called the marginal cost curve now the point where the marginal cost curve intersect the marginal revenue curve at point e this is where the firm maximizes its profit the profit maximization point at this point marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And this is the point where the business should produce. Because this is your level of production. This is your optimal level of your output level is 100. Now let's look at this curve. What does this curve tells us? Now, if I produce, can you see C, point C on the marginal cost curve? Now, you read it like this, the marginal cost curve, and that is the marginal revenue curve. So in this case, what do you observe? You observe that your marginal revenue is more than your marginal cost. We can also say your marginal revenue is greater than your marginal cost. Now, what should happen here? Now, remember this grade 12s. What, where is your profit maximization point is E. So that means if a firm produce at point C, or a output level at point C, what does that mean? Now, at this point, when if a business or individual firm produces at point C, it means the marginal revenue is more than the marginal cost. And in this case, the business must increase its production until it reaches point E, the equilibrium point, or the profit maximization point. So this means if we produce there or here at point C, we have 
more room. We can produce more to improve our profits. This is what it means. If we produce here, we can produce more and more. And every time when we produce an additional product, we are actually increasing our profits. So again, let me just recap. When we produce at point C, production must be increased until point E is reached. Am I right? Why? Because point E is our profit maximization point. Now, if we increase our production, it means that for every additional product that is produced, the business is making a profit until we reach this point. Now let's go further. If we produce at point D, if we produce at point D here, the business is actually making a loss. No? So if if the per firm produces there, the firm produces at a output where your marginal revenue, can you see there? Your marginal revenue is lower than your marginal cost. And the business will make a loss for every additional product it produces. It will make a loss. Therefore, now if you produce and you go on and you go on and you go on, what is actually happening? You are literally eating away your profits because you are making less and less profits. Therefore, if you pro a business or individual firm produces at point D, that firm should reduce its production, reduce its production until it reaches the point where your marginal cost and your marginal revenue is equal to each other where your marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So we will not produce 150 units, but we will decrease our production until we reach 100 units. Because 100 units, that is our profit maximization output level of the firm. Now, when you look at this graph, we, you must realize one thing. Where your marginal revenue is greater than your marginal cost, production output must increase. This is a golden rule. When you produce where your marginal revenue is more than your marginal cost, you will have to increase your production. When you produce at a point where your marginal revenue is smaller or less than your marginal cost, then your production output must decrease until you reach the profit maximization point. Now let's go further and we look at point J. Now, point J is where your marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, but it is on the decreasing or descending part of the marginal cost curve. Now, where, and which is still moving through to point E. So point G is point J is on the decreasing or descending side of the marginal cost curve, and it is still moving through to point E 
the profit maximization point. Now there will nobody will produce at point J. Okay, nobody will produce there. Why? Because it is on the descending or decreasing part of the marginal cost curve. Now, if we look at at opportunity cost. Now, before we go to opportunity cost, my question, my, my statement was we will not produce a J because it is on the decreasing or descending part of the marginal cost curve. And you can produce more and more at a lower production cost on a lower production cost up till where you go on to point E, the profit maximization point. Now, when we look at opportunity cost, so for every time you produce at point J, you are actually making a loss because you can make more profits if you produce until you reach point E, the profit maximization point. Like I've said previously, your profit maximization point is you produce more and more and more. You can see there because 100 is your output level of production is 100. It is your profit maximization point. So. Let's look further. From point J to point E, marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. So for each additional product that is produced, the business is making a profit. So the business is producing greater production output and that leads to greater profits for the business. Just very important, your profit maximization must be on the rising part of the marginal cost curve. Remember that or your, your profit maximization point must be on the rising part of the marginal cost curve. Thank you very much. The effect when businesses enter or leave the market. Now again, we are going to use graphs. So let's put the graph on. We know the draw by now. We are going to do businesses into the market first. So this is what we are going to do first. What happened? What is the effect when businesses enter the market? So first of all, we say supply will increase because when we have more businesses in the market, it means that more goods are being produced and more goods are put onto the market. Now, <clears throat> let's see, this is the vertical X and this is the horizontal X. There's the zero. We have price, quantity, that is demand, and that is supply. We know by, by now that the point where demand and supply intersect, that is called your equilibrium. So 10 rand is the equilibrium price and 200 is the equilibrium quantity demand and the 200 the quantity supplied. Now what happens if more and more businesses enter the market? When more and more business enter the market, more goods are put onto the market. That means the supply curve will shift to the right. And when the supply curve shift to the right, what can you see on the graph? First of all, when supply increase, the supply curve shifts to the right. A new supply curve is formed. A new 
equilibrium is formed that when the supply curve shifts to the right, your price decrease and your quantity on the market increase. Can you see there? There you can see when the supply curve shifts to the right, the price decrease from 10 rand to 5 rand at the new equilibrium E1 and the quantity demand in the market will increase from 200 to 300. Now let's look what happens when businesses leaves the market. Again, supply will decrease. So let's look at the supply curve. Again, horizontal is price, vertical axis is quantity, point of origin. What are we busy looking at now? The businesses leaves the market. So there's your demand curve, your supply curve, there's your market equilibrium, equilibrium price, and equilibrium quantity. Now what happens when suppliers leaves the market? It means that less goods are going to be produced. So the supply curve shifts to the left. A new supply curve is formed S1. A new equilibrium is formed there E1. And that means the effect is that the price increased from 10 rent to 15 rent, meaning that goods has become more expensive and the quantity supplied on the market will decrease from 200 to 100. And that is the effect it will have when businesses leaves the market. The various equilibrium positions under perfect competition. Now, when we look at perfect competition, we know by now that marginal revenue, marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost. That is the profit maximization point. Secondly, the business should always produce where marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. We know this by now. Secondly, what, what I want you to know and to remember, and it's actually a, a golden nugget or a clue, is that the position of the average cost curve in relation to market price or the average revenue curve determines whether the business make normal profit, economic profit, or economic loss. Now, today in this session, we are going to do the three equilibrium positions. And these equilibrium positions are normal profit, economic profit, and economic loss. Now let's start with, economic, with normal profit. Now, what is normal profit? The business makes normal profit, which is the minimum earnings required to prevent the entrepreneur from closing the business and using his factors of production elsewhere. In other words, it is the minimum earnings required to keep the entrepreneur in production. All the implicit cost or the opportunity cost of the firm are included in the normal profit. Now let's look at the graph. I'm, I, to, I told you that we are going to look at normal profit, economic profit, economic loss, or like they are, they are known as the equilibrium positions. And we're going, we are going to do that by means of a graph. Now let's draw the graph, the vertical X, the horizontal X, zero. That is your price, cost and revenue. We label our vertical X. We label our horizontal X and that is quantity. We know by now that the individual business under perfect competition has a horizontal demand curve 
and this horizontal demand curve, you also find the marginal revenue curve, and we also find the average revenue curve. And with this horizontal demand curve, it also indicates the price, the market price, the current market price. Now let's draw the marginal cost curve. The marginal cost curve has a descending or decreasing and up to the point and then it increases again. Then what do we look for now first? We first look for the profit maximization point, the point where your marginal cost intersects with your marginal revenue curve. And that is indicated with E and that indicates the equilibrium. And that is also indicates the equilibrium quantity, which is 10 or Q1 and the equilibrium price, which is 10 or P1. Now let's draw the average cost curve. Now the average cost curve, or as it's known as the short term average cost curve, you can see it slopes downward and then upwards again. Now what is important for you to know here is the following, is the position of the average cost curve. The average cost curve is tangent to the average revenue curve. Can you see that? It is tangent. It touches the lowest point of the average cost curve, touches the average revenue curve at point E. Another important thing to note is that the marginal cost curve intersects or the average cost curve at its minimum point. That is also another important thing that you should know. It is the marginal cost cuts or intersect the average cost curve at its minimum point, its lowest point. Now, this situation is called normal profit. Normal profit is where it is where the business is making normal profit where your average cost curve is tangent to the average revenue curve. There you can see, there you can see the firm maximizes profit at E and it's also, you can also see the average cost is equal to average revenue. So total revenue is equal to total cost. And this is what normal profit is, right? Now let's go on. If we should do a calculation, we can basically see that OP1 times OQ1, meaning 10 times 10, that will give you 100. That is your average cost. And your average revenue is also 10 times 10 is 100. So the, total, the average cost is 100 and the average revenue is a 100. So therefore, the business is making normal profit. Let's go to the next one. Now, the next one is economic profit. Now, again, important to note, and I'm going to refer to it every time, the position of the short-term average cost curve determines whether the business is making an economic profit, a normal profit, or an economic loss. Now, when we look at the graph, again, let's draw the graph. That is your vertical X, horizontal X. That is your zero point of origin. That is your labeling price, cost and revenue. That is quantity. And that is your horizontal demand curve. And we all know by now that the individual business 
has a horizontal demand curve. And that curve is also your marginal revenue curve and your average revenue curve. Now let's draw the marginal cost curve. The marginal cost curve, you know, it looks like a Nike sign, but like I told you previously, you do not refer to the word Nike sign. We say it is the marginal cost curve. And when you draw the marginal cost curve, the first thing you are looking for is your equilibrium point. The point where your marginal cost intersect your marginal revenue curve. And that is your equilibrium position. That is your equilibrium position. So in this case, your market price is 10 rand and your equilibrium, which you will see later, is 100. Let's draw the average cost curve. Now you can see the average cost curve again has a downward slope and then it, as, at this point, the lowest point, it moves upwards again. The marginal cost curve intersect or cuts the average cost curve at its lowest point. Now, grade 12, when we go on, we can see at point E, what happens at point E? At point E, the business is maximizing its profits. This is the point where your marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, right? And that also indicates your market price or your equilibrium price and your equilibrium quantity. So in this case, your market price is 10 rand and your equilibrium output level will be 10 rand or Q1. Right? Again. Now, what can you see? What do you observe here? You can see that this is the average cost curve and that is your margin or your average revenue curve. Now, in this case, you can see that your average cost curve, average cost is lower than your average revenue. When you when you produce the product, your average cost and when you sell the product, your average revenue. So you earn. Am I right? So this is what it's happened. So when the minimum point, when the minimum point, that is the minimum point of the short term average cost curve lies below the average revenue curve or the market price. Right. Then it means the business earns more money for each item sold than it pays for each item it produced. So they earn more money when they sell the product. So and less money is used when they produce the product. They earn more money for the product when it's sold than it costs to produce the product. This is you can see it here clearly. Now this is what we call economic profit because look at the position of the average cost curve. Economic profit means that you make a profit and there your revenue, average revenue is more than your average cost. Now let's look further. Let's calculate it. We, when you total revenue, to calculate total revenue, it is OP1 times OQ1. And total cost will be, total cost will be OC times OQ. Now, what is important that you should note here? You draw, can you see the, you look at the, the profit maximization point and you draw a line downwards, vertical downwards until it reaches the horizontal X. Can you see there? That is important to know because that is important for us to know. So 
when we calculate the economic profit means that it is OC. That is your cost. That is the cost. Can you see it reads the cost line, the average cost? So it is OC times OQ. And that will give you a total of, let's look at it now. So that will be 10, 10 times 10 will give you 100. And this 8, 8 times 10, that will give you 80. So when we look at economic profit, the shaded area, come now, the shaded area is your economic profit. It is P1, E, B, and C. That is your economic profit. And when we work it out, that will be then constitute like, it will be 10, times 10 is 100, 8 times 10 is 80, so 100 minus 80 will give you 20. So the business is making an economic profit of 20 rand. You can also do it another way. You can take 8 rand, 10 rand, minus 8 gives you 2, and that 2 times 10 will also give you 20, and that also means that 20 is your economic profit. The shaded area is your economic profit. Look there. It is, look the line, you draw the line from the profit maximum equation point until it reaches the average cost curve, and then you go to the price. That is how we calculate economic profit. Let's look at economic loss. Economic loss. Now again, we are going to use the graphs. Again, the vertical, horizontal, the zero, the labeling, price, cost, revenue, the um, labeling of the horizontal X, it's quantity, price, your price, this is also your demand curve, marginal revenue curve, and average revenue curve. So these are the three curves, and now we draw the marginal cost curve. Again, it is a descending, and it goes upwards, and what do we look for now? We find the point where your marginal cost intersects your marginal revenue, and that is your equilibrium position. That is very important, grade 12s, to always determine where the equilibrium position is. Because if you have the equilibrium position, it makes things much easier. Now, you draw the average cost curve. Can you see there? And the marginal cost curve intersects the average cost curve at its minimum point. That is very, very important. Remember, the marginal cost curve intersects the average cost curve at its minimum point. Now let's go on. And now, can you see, when we look at the profit maximization point, that is your equilibrium price or your market price, and that is your market quantity. That is important. Now, what happens now? What happens now is that, now can you see again, what determines, what is important here? The location of the average cost curve, the location where it is positioned, shows us or determines whether the business make a economic loss or economic profit or normal profit. Now look at where it is situated. Okay, now. Now we draw, come now. Now you can see we draw the line upwards to where it reached the average cost curve. We do not go there. You do not go there. We go from the minimum point. We go the profit maximization point and we draw the line upwards until it reaches the average cost curve. 
and that is what it costs us to produce one article. And that is the revenue we earn when we sell one article. Now, when you look at this. Now, let's go on. In this case, the minimum point, that is the minimum point. The minimum point of the average cost curve is or lies above the average revenue curve. Can you see that? It lies above. Now, when the minimum point of the average cost curve lies above the average revenue or the market price, right? It means the business pays more for each item it produces than what it earns for each item sold. So the business use more money to produce the product and they earn less per product when they sell the product. Now, in this case, you can see it clearly. So when we look at this, can you see immediately you can see I, I use more money to produce the product and I earn less money. So this already should show you that you are making a loss. Now, this is your loss that the business is making. So how do we calculate it? That is your total revenue, total revenue, the money that you earn, and that is your total cost, the cost to produce one article. Now, let's look at it. So zero so C multiplied by zero Q1. Am I right? And then your total cost will be, or the, the cost of the business is giving out is zero C times zero Q1. And the difference between the two will be your gray area. C, L, E, P1, that constitute your economic loss. Now let's work it out with figures. Let's work it out with figures. We take the total revenue, the money that we earn. Am I right? Total revenue is the money that the business get. So it's zero. Zero six times eight gives you 48. Am I right? And when we multiply that, 0, 8, that is the cost to produce that. 8 times 8 is 64. So your total revenue is your total cost. The cost is 48 rand minus the revenue, that is 64. 8 times 8 is 64, am I right? That is your cost. The total cost to produce the, pro the products, total cost is 8 times 8, give you 64, and the total revenue, 6 times 8 is 48. So 48 total revenue minus your 64 total cost, means that you make a loss of 16 rand. Now, grade 12s, when you work out your economic loss, always write the word loss, loss at the back. So in this case, will be minus 16, loss. Because sometimes we forget to put the minus sign. And if you forget to put the minus, then it is a positive amount. But if you write 16 rand loss, we mean we know it is a loss. So again, how do they make the loss? Your total revenue is 48. Your total cost is 64. 48 minus 64 will give you 
minus 16. You can even do it this way. Can you see your cost? And your income, so your revenue is 6 rand. Minus 8 will give you minus 2. Minus 2 rand times 8 will give you minus 16. So the shaded area indicate economic loss. Minus 16 rand loss. Now important to know. Just to end off, let's look at the following. Let's look at the following. Let's look there. When the when the average cost curve is tangent to the average revenue curve, we say it we make normal profit. When the average cost curve lies below the average revenue, we make economic profit. And when the average cost curve lies above the average revenue curve, we are making economic loss. I'm going to explain the shutdown point using cost and revenue curves. Now, we all know that we are going to explain this shutdown point, and we are busy now with the individual business under perfect competition. Now let's look at the graph because we will explain the shutdown point by using a graph. Now we first draw the vertical X and then the point of origin. We label our axis. It is price, cost and revenue. And then the horizontal X is quantity, price, we all know by now that the demand curve of the individual business under perfect competition is a horizontal demand curve. And this demand curve also represents price and it also represents marginal revenue and average revenue. Now let's draw the short term marginal cost curve and then the average variable cost curve. Now this, these are two very important curves when we want to determine the shutdown point. Now at point E, point E represents the shutdown point of the individual business. The shutdown point is where the short term marginal cost curve is equal to the average variable cost curve or the average revenue curve is or average revenue is equal to average variable cost okay so why is this point important because marginal cost is equal to average variable cost and average revenue is equal to average variable cost. The firm will not produce below point E. They will not produce here. They will not produce below point E1, where the marginal cost curve intersects the average variable cost at its minimum point. Now, this is what happens the year. Shorter marginal cost curve intersects the average variable cost at its minimum point. Businesses will not produce at a market price below P1 because the average revenue is less than average variable cost. At any price, even slightly below point E1, the firm will not even cover its variable cost. That is variable cost is things like wages, raw materials, etc. And the firm will have to close down. From point E or below this point, the firm cannot meet its operational cost because your total revenue is less than total cost. 
at a price below P1, the firm, the firm will produce zero quantity of goods because the firm will shut down. It is important that the firm's revenue covers the average variable cost for the business to stay in operation. Now, you understand now, grade 12s, that this point, point E1, where your marginal cost is equal to your average variable cost, that is your shutdown point. Now, what happens in examinations? Sometimes the examiners add the following question. What happened when the price increase from P1 to P3? Now, let's look. Again, your horizontal demand curve, marginal revenue, average revenue, and now we have your short-term average cost curve at point E3. Now, what happens here? When the market price increase from P1 to P3, am I right? When it increased from P1 to P3, the marginal cost here is equal to marginal revenue. Can you see there? It is equal there. Then, at point E3, right? Now, at point E3, where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, that is known as your profit maximization point. Am I right? Another thing that you should have a look here is that your marginal cost curve intersect your short-term average cost curve at its minimum point. Can you see there? There's the average cost curve and it intersects at the minimum point. Then the short-term average cost is equal here to average revenue. Can you see? Short-term average cost is equal to average revenue. You can also see that the short-term average cost curve lies tangent or next to the average revenue curve. And we know by now that when the average cost curve is tangent to the average revenue curve, we say the individual business is making normal profit. But what happens? What happens if the price increase from P1 to P3, the output level of the business increase from Q1 to Q3? Now, and they ask also another question. What happened when the price increase to P4? Now, look at this. If the price increase from P, what happened if the price increase from P3 to P4? Again, here you can see the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue at point E4. Am I right? Can you see the marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue at point E4? But what happens? You can see when we produce at point E4, the output level of production increase from Q3 to Q4. Now, if our production output level increase. It means we produce more, we generate more money, we get more income, and that means that our profits will increase. And that is why at point E4, the business will make economic profit. Why? They make at P3, they will make normal profit. And when they produce more, the output level increase, they will make more money 
and that will be economic profit. The effect on price if the individual producer increases or decreases the output, in other words, supply under perfect markets or competition. Now we are going to do this by using a graph. Now what are we going to look at? What are we going to study? It is the supply curve of the individual business, firm, producer. What happened to the supply curve or what happened or what effect does it have on price when supply increase or supply decrease under perfect competition? Now we are going to do this by means of a graph. Now let's draw the graph. This is the vertical X, horizontal X, point of origin. We label the vertical X price. We label the horizontal X as quantity. We draw the demand curve. And we all know by now that the demand curve for the individual business under perfect markets or perfect competition is a horizontal line. This is also represents the price or the market price. It also represents the average revenue curve and it also represents the marginal revenue curve. Now let's draw the supply curve. The supply curve, it is SS and where the supply curve intersects the demand curve, that is the equilibrium position or point E1. Now what happens at that point? At that point, equilibrium point, the equilibrium market price is 10 rand and the equilibrium quantity is 100 units. Now what happened when the, or what will happen when the individual producer increase supply? If the individual producer increases its supply, the supply curve will shift to the right. A new supply curve will be formed, S1, S1, and a new equilibrium point will be formed, E2. Now you can see what happens. When the supply curve shifts to the right, it means that supply increased. The market price remained the same at 10 rand, but the quantity supply on the market will increase from 100 units to 150 units. What will happen if the firm decrease its supply? Then the supply curve will shift to the left. A new supply curve will be formed, S2, S2, and a new equilibrium point, E3. Now, what happens there? When the supply curve shifts to the left, the supply on the market will decrease from 100 units to 150 units. But the price remains the same. The price remains constant at 10 Rand. Why? because the individual business is a price taker. They take the price from the market. That is why, let's sum up. When the price or when the supply on the market increase, when the producer increase its supply, the supply curve will shift to the right. A new supply curve will be formed a new equilibrium will be formed, and that means that the supply on the market will increase from 100 units to 150 units. When the producer decreases its supply, the supply curve will shift to the left. A new supply curve will be formed, S2, S2, a new equilibrium, E3. And what happens there? When the 
individual producer reduce or decrease supply, the amount of units on the market will decrease from 100 to 150, but the market price will remain the same. How the supply curve is derived from cost curves. Now again, we are going to make use of graphs to explain the principle to you. Now, before we start, it is important that you should remember the following. The firm is a price taker and reacts to what happened on the market and takes the market price. The location of the average total cost curve or the short term average cost curve in relation to market price determine normal profit, economic profit and economic loss. The shutdown point is where the marginal cost curve intersect the average variable cost curve at its minimum point. Now, what are we busy with? Like I've told you, we are busy. The question will be derive the supply curve of the individual business from cost curves. Now to explain this, I'm going to use graphs. So let's draw the graph. The vertical X is price. The horizontal X is quantity. This is our point of origin. Again, vertical, horizontal, horizontal, your point of origin, we label our axis. Now, let's look at this, the following. This curve, this curve will represent our cost curves and this curve will represent the supply curve. So we are going to use the cost curves and we're going to take all the information over and plot the supply curve. Now let's look, let's draw the marginal cost curve. We draw the average variable cost curve and the short term average cost curve. Now, when we look at P1, at P1, the business will not produce at a price lower than P1 because average revenue is less than average variable cost. The firm will not produce at point E1 because that is where the marginal cost curve intersects the average variable cost at its minimum point. At point E, point E, this point here, represents the shutdown point. And the shutdown point is where your marginal cost curve is equal to your average variable cost curve. Now, let's look at the supply curve. At price P1, the quantity supply on the market is Q1, the output level of production is Q1. We plot over and we plot the output level Q1, equilibrium point E1 on the supply curve. As the price increase, the firm will increase its level of output or production to increase its profits. The firm therefore wants to produce more. Now the at price, if the price, the market price increase from P1 to P2, this will result in an increase in the level of output from Q1 to Q2. Again, we will draw the demand curve and we plot the supply curve, E2, what happens to the output level of production? It increased from Q1 to Q2. Now, the firm will 
want to increase the price because at point E2, the average cost is more than average revenue. That's your average revenue. So average cost is more than average revenue. The firm will therefore want to produce more and increase its profits. If the price increase from P2 to P3, we will see equilibrium, the E3 is formed, point E3, and at this point, what do we see? Average revenue, average revenue, this is our average revenue line. Average revenue is equal to average cost. And what happens when we produce, when the price increase from P2 to P3, the output level of production increase from Q2 to Q3. And here we plot it on the supply curve. It increase from Q2 to Q3. Now the market price increase from P3 to P4. And there you can see at E4, the marginal cost curve intersect the average revenue curve at E4. Point E4 lies above the average cost curve. Can you see there? E4 lies above the average cost curve. This implies that if the market price is above the average cost curve, the business will increase its production from Q3 to Q4. Now let's plot it there. Again, we plot it. Price is P4. We plot E4. So the output level of production increase from Q3 to Q4. Now, if the market price is at P4 at an output level of Q4, can you see there? The market price is P4 with an output level of Q4, the business will make economic profit. Now let's move over to the supply curve. When we join all the dots on the supply curve, there you can see, if we join the dots, it plots the supply curve for the individual business. Now, the, the supply curve is equal to the marginal cost curve. The supply, the firm's supply curve is the rising part of the marginal cost curve. Can you see there? It looks the same as the marginal cost curve. So we say that the, the firm's supply curve is the rising part of the marginal cost curve above the minimum point where marginal cost is intersect average variable cost. In other, other words, it is just above your shutdown point. The supply curve starts at point E and slopes upwards Can you see it slopes upwards due to the marginal cross that increases as output increase? And this is so what can you see is that the mar, the supply curve is also the marginal cost curve, but it is the upper part. Can you see? I've told you that we do not produce below this point. So it is the upper part. This part is this part, and this part is the upper part, just a, from the shutdown point upwards is your supply curve of the individual firm. The shape 
of the short run and long run curve of the monopoly. And I'm going to do it by means of a graph. Now let's draw the graph. Monopoly. Now what is a monopoly? A monopoly is the only supplier of a good or a service or product. Let's say a product. Monopoly is the only supplier of a product. Now let's draw the graph short run and long run. Again, we draw the axis, vertical X, horizontal X, vertical X, horizontal X, and we label our axis, vertical X, price income cost, horizontal X quantity, point of origin, again in a long run. Now let's draw the curves. Now, when we look at monopoly, what type of product does the monopolist sell? The product is unique with no close substitutes. Now let's draw the graph. We have the demand curve is equal to the average revenue curve. This is your marginal revenue curve. Again, your demand curve is equal to your average revenue curve. And this is your marginal revenue curve. Now, when we look at the short run and long run, the short run is relatively inelastic, where the long run is relatively more elastic. Can you see? It shifts more to the right. This one is relatively inelastic, and this one is relatively more elastic. Then, remember another thing. Short run. run. The monopolist is making economic profit and economic loss or loss in the short run, but they only make economic profit in the long run. OK, short run profit and loss, but in the long run, only economic profit. Then in the short run, the marginal revenue curve lies in the middle between the demand curve and the point of origin. So this marginal revenue curve lies in the middle between that and the demand curve. That is also another way to identify the short run and the long run. Now, let's look further. The demand curve of the monopolist has a negative slope. Can you see it the slopes from it slopes downwards from top left to right bottom. So that is a negative demand curve. The reason for this is the monopolist is the only supplier for their product. They can decide, the monopolist can decide at which price on this demand curve they will sell the product. They determine the price. The monopolist is the only supplier and represents the demand curve for the whole market or the market as a whole. Can you see that? Because they are the only supplier, this demand curve represents also the market. Then let's go further. The demand curve is equal to the average revenue curve. Since the monopolist is, is charging a single price for all the units it sells, the average revenue per unit is identical to the price. The average revenue refers to the amount a business earns for each unit sold. Then the marginal revenue curve lies below the demand curve or the average revenue curve. Can you see there? 
the marginal revenue curve lies below the demand curve and the average revenue curve. The demand curve in a imperfect market has a downward slope. In other words, the demand curve for the monopolist is a downward slope from top left to right bottom, which means that if the monopolist wants to increase its sales with an additional unit, the price of the product must decrease. You can see that. So if they want to increase their sales, they must decrease the price. So for each additional unit, they want, uh, or, but for every additional unit they want to increase their sales with, they must decrease their price. This lower price applies to all customers. The marginal revenue curve or marginal revenue, the amount by which the total revenue increase if one additional unit is sold will therefore be lower than the price. The marginal revenue curve lies therefore below the demand curve or the average revenue curve. The marginal revenue, average revenue, and total revenue curves. Now, when we study monopolies, keep the following in mind. The monopoly is the only seller in the market. The monopoly sells a unique product with no close substitutes. The monopolist is a price maker and have control over the price of a product. There are barriers to entry and exit. In a monopoly, entry is totally blocked. Now we are going, or I am going to explain this concept with the aid of graphs. Now let's look at the graph. So we are busy with the monopoly. Now, when we look at the monopoly, I will draw the two graphs. And here you can see the following. We have the monopolist demand curve has a negative slope. There you can see the negative slope. That is the demand curve. It slopes downwards from top left to right bottom. The marginal revenue curve lies below the demand curve or the average revenue curve. The reason for this is the reason why the marginal revenue lies below the average revenue. The monopolist sells every additional unit at a lower cost. The monopolist is the only supplier for the product. They can dictate at what price on the demand curve they will sell their product. The monopolist is the only supplier and therefore the demand curve of the monopolist or the monopoly is also the market curve for the whole market. It is the market demand curve. Now let's look at total revenue. Here is the total revenue curve. The slope of the total revenue curve rises up to a point. And as the slope of the total re um, reserve, um, total revenue curve rises as output increases, it eventually reaches a point. It eventually reaches a point and then it turns negative again. So what happens? The slope of the total revenue curve 
rises, rises as output increase and reaches a point and then eventually it decreases again. The changing slope of this curve, the total revenue curve, is due to the changing price. Now let's look further. When you study this curve, you will see as long as the marginal revenue curve, this is the marginal revenue curve. This is the marginal revenue curve. And there you can see, as long as the marginal revenue curve is positive, now that is positive, and below the horizontal line is negative. As long as that marginal revenue is positive, the total revenue will increase to a point. When your marginal revenue curve, let's look there, I'm gonna put it, when it's zero, there you can see it's zero. When your marginal revenue is zero, the total revenue curve reaches its highest point, its maximum level. When the marginal revenue is negative. Now this portion below the, the the horizontal x, this is negative. Now when your marginal revenue is negative, the total revenue curve will decrease. When the price in when the price decrease from P1, from P to P1, when the price decrease from P to P1, the quantity supply on the market will increase from Q to Q1. There you can see it increases from Q to Q1. But the total revenue of the monopolist will decrease. So what is the effect? When the price decreases, the quantity supply on the market will decrease. Now, let's look further. The monopolist will not drastically increase the price of the product because certain things must be kept in mind. And there you can see, I've told you that when the price drop, the quantity on the market will increase, but the total revenue of the monopolist will decrease. So the, the, the monopolist will not decrease the price drastically because consumers will buy alternative products due to budget constraints. Total revenue will fall when demand falls. So if the demand falls for the product, your revenue, your revenue will fall. The loss of income limits the efficiency of the business enterprise. And this may lead the business closing its doors due to a loss of market share. So what are the factors that affect price of goods and services for the monopoly? First of all, it's your income level of people. And secondly, the demand for the product. Now, when we determine the, whether a business makes a profit or a loss, what are the curves that we will use? We will use the marginal cost curve and the marginal revenue curve. The average cost curve the average revenue curve, the total revenue curve, and the total cost curve. Negative externalities, and I'm going to do it with the aid of graphs. Now let's look at the graph. Before we start, the question is, what is negative externalities? Negative externalities are also called spillover cost. It is cost which spill over 
to someone else other than the user or the producer. It is cost that is borne by someone who is not directly involved in the transaction or activity. Negative externalities bear a private cost, the cost of producing the actual product, and a social cost, the cost suffered by society. If the social cost of a good were added to the private cost of a good, the final price will be pushed up and fewer goods will be supplied. Now, what are examples of negative externalities? Pollution, substance abuse, traffic congestions, etc. Now, let's look at the graph. We draw the vertical X, the horizontal X, point of origin. We label our X price cost. Horizontal is quantity. And now we draw the demand curve. The demand curve is also the marginal social benefit. Marginal social benefit is what people will pay for the product. Let's draw the supply curve. The supply curve is the marginal private cost curve. The supply curve only looks at the cost to the firm of producing each additional unit. Now let's look at point A. At point A, here you can see marginal social benefit is equal to marginal private cost. The price per unit is P and the quantity sold is Q. This price only include private cost. The price of P is the market price and the quantity Q is the market quantity and it does not include the cost to society as a whole. The external cost is not included when the market produced at Q1 year. When external cost or cost to society is included in the price, the supply curve will shift to the left and there you see S1, S1, and it's also called the marginal social cost curve. At point B, marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. The price per unit increase from P to P1 and the quantity sold decrease from Q to Q1 units. If the market does not take external cost into consideration, this is the market, and external cost is not included here. You can see external cost is not included here. So if the market does not take external cost into consideration, it will overproduce. It will overproduce. You can see it produces more. There are more units exchanged on the market than what is socially desirable. The market produces too much because at an output level of Q, and now you can see marginal social cost is more is more than marginal social benefit. Can you see there? So if the market, if external cost is not included, the market will overproduce, they will produce too much. And there you can see it. Your social, marginal social cost 
is more than marginal social benefit. When the market take external costs in consideration, yeah, this graph, into cost production decrease, and you can see it, it decreased from Q to Q1. And an optimal level of output is reached, Q1. At point B, where marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost, the result is that the price of the product becomes more expensive, the price of the product increase, And, and production of the product or the good will decrease. There you can see. So if the price of the product increase, the production of the product will decrease. Producing too much of the product creates a negative externality. There you can see a negative externality, a welfare loss, and this is the welfare loss or the negative externality. It is A, B, C. So if we produce too much, it creates a negative externality, and the negative externality is in the shaded area A, B, C. If the market is left to its own devices at Q, Q will be produced, which is socially insufficient. Thank you.